All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I'm driving a 1990 Honda Accord DX. Up front is a 2.2 liter inline four. And down below is a five speed manual transmission. Now this generation of the Accord is known as the CB7. That's just the body designation for Accords and this seems to be a pretty favorable body style. We'll get into that a little bit later on. But like I said, up front is that 2.2 liter inline four. It is known as the F22A1 and it makes about 125 horsepower, 137 foot pounds of torque. But if you got a higher trim level Accord, you got the F22A4, which made five more horsepower. Five more horsepower, that's it. But this is the F22A1. It is an all aluminum engine, 16 valve, single overhead cam, but it's a Honda motor. So it's reliable, it's quiet, it gets okay gas mileage. Gets 21 in the city, 27 on the highway, which for 30 years ago, isn't the worst thing I've heard. But like I said, paired to it, five speed manual transmission. I'm absolutely loving it. The clutch grabs super down low, almost as soon as you start moving your foot off the pedal, it's engaging the clutch. But it's nice and easy to drive. It's very simple. It's very low worry, low maintenance. And I like that a lot. Of course, last but not least, the Accord is front wheel drive. So let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have three main gauges. On the left is my tachometer and the center is my speedometer. And on the right is my fuel and coolant temperature. All my necessary information is right there up front. And I absolutely love that very clean very easy to read. And that's what I love about Hondas of this era. Very clean, very, very simple. I absolutely love that. And what's interesting is that the speedometer still has the little 55 mile an hour mark. This is very much an 80s thing because the national speed limit here in America was 55 miles an hour. That was as fast as anyone could go. So a lot of manufacturers from the 80s and into the 90s had a little arrow or a red line or a mark designating that. So that's why it has that little yellow 55 mile an hour mark. I think that's kind of funny and quirky of the 90s and 80s. On the steering wheel, I don't actually have any buttons. It's a very clean and simple steering wheel that you would find in pretty much any other Honda of the era. Essentially an EF Civic is going to have this same steering wheel. To the left of me, I have a vent and that's really it. And then on the door, I have my crank window and manual locks. Again, very, very basic, but it, it's all so good. And we'll get into that a little bit later on. In the center up on the actual dashboard itself, I do have a digital clock. I absolutely love that. And it comes with its own little hood. So right now it's super bright out. It's like 9 a.m. and I can read the clock. I love that. A lot of auto manufacturers overlook this part and they put a digital clock up on the dash and they're like, oh, it's great. And then the sun hits it and now you can't see anything. This has a hood, it's great, it's easy to read and I absolutely love that. Then I have my two climate control vents, my actual climate controls themselves and an aftermarket radio. This is not the factory unit from Honda, but like I say, every radio from the 90s was absolute garbage. So of course you gotta change that out at some point. And then we have the shifter. The shifter looks great. This is the stock shift knob. It looks, it feels great. It doesn't have much weight to it, but it's nice and light. And I always, always, always praise Honda for their shifters. They all feel great. They click into gear. 131,000 miles on this car, the shifter still feels great. I know exactly what I'm doing, even though I haven't been driving this car for too long. There's no guesswork with a Honda shifter. I don't have to guess which gear I'm in or try to figure it out on my own. It just works and it feels great. It just, it feels, feels great. The seats are nice and comfortable as well. They're definitely dated at this point. Very, very 90s. However, they are comfortable. And before we get to the back seats, these front seats actually have a very 90s feature as well. Power seat belts. If you are unfamiliar, cars in the late 80s and early 90s, some of them came with power seat belts. This was sort of a gimmicky sort of thing. And unfortunately with some cars, at least for the FC RX-7, sometimes they would get stuck in the not locked position. So then your seat belts didn't work. There's actually a Mazda recall for that. I'm not 100% sure if that ever happened with the Hondas, but that was pretty much a safety concern. And so every auto manufacturer went away with power seat belts from then on out. 
Thanks, Mazda. But we do have back seats, so let's do a back seat review. All right, so I'm in the back of the 1990 Honda Accord, and honestly, I don't get anything back here. Headroom is decently good. I probably have about an inch, inch and a half up above my head, and I'm 5'11", so it's not bad. Leg room isn't amazing. It's also not terrible. I have regular seatbelts back here. Manual locks, manual windows, everything like that. So this is a very manual car. Very basic back seat, but it has back seats, and definitely comparing it to a Honda Civic from the same era, this is worlds better. This back seat is worlds better than a same year Honda Civic, for sure. 100% and I absolutely love that. Now we have to talk about the looks. I actually really, really like the look of this Accord. I like the boxiness. I like the style of it. You know, it's just so simple. It's not over styled. I like the new Accords and we'll talk about that later on. This feels like some guy from Honda was just like, that's what a four door should look like. That's what we're making our four door look like. It just makes sense. It's very ergonomic. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but everything has a purpose and everything works. I love that. I really, really do. And so speaking of Mazda, I recently reviewed a Mazda 626, a 1990, which was a direct competitor to this Honda Accord. And I'll leave that at the end of the video. And I have to say both cars drive very, very similarly. They are bigger sedans, even though this is like the size of a modern Civic, but they're very engaging. They have the stick shift. They feel light on their feet. This car is 2,700 pounds. They feel nimble. I have tons and tons of leg room because the door card isn't the size of Montana. I can actually spread out and sort of get comfortable in the car. Similarly to the Ford Festiva that I drove, same thing there. My left leg had miles and miles of room because of how thin the door card was. And so if you're looking at vehicles from this era or you like vehicles from this era, whatever it may be, I'll link the 626 at the end. I really can't choose between the two. You guys know I'm a diehard Mazda fan, but this, this drives no different. It's very, very similar. And so my final talking point is we'll compare this to the 2019 Honda Accord that I drove. Now, 2019 Honda Accords are nice. They're very, very nice. I think for a reliable sedan, I think they're absolutely great. However, I think over the years, they've lost the sort of driving pleasure that this Accord has. I'm having fun driving this. I really am. It feels light. It's responsive. The steering feels like I'm connected to the road. It doesn't have electric power steering. The stick shift, like I said, Honda stick shift, it feels great. Every gear I feel and so I won't get into my rant again. If you really want to listen to my rant, check out my BMW E30 review where I rant about the 80s. But what reigns true is the fact that in the 80s and spilling into the 90s, in a car, you got to feel everything. You felt the road, you felt connected. When I drive this, I'm no different than anyone else on the road. And I, I like that feeling. There's a sort of togetherness and emotion that comes with driving these older cars. And that reigns true here in the Accord. Yes, this humble little Accord that was never meant to go any faster than 55 miles an hour. It too is so filled with emotion and feeling just because of how light and nimble it is and the era in which it came from. I love this little sedan. I love sedans from the 90s. They're just fantastic and they're easy to work on. They're easy to find parts for. I can't guarantee it, but I bet you there are some Honda parts within close proximity that would work on this car. It's just great. It's humble and it's fun. And that's what's missing from the new Accords. They're not humble. They're not fun. They're flashy. They're filled with technology and they get a job done, sure, but they don't feel like this anymore. They just don't. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to David for letting me take out his Accord. Wow, this is, that's something. But thank you to David for letting me take out his Accord. If you guys remember last year, I reviewed a Dodge Neon. That was also his as well, his little first gen Neon. But this is its replacement. And honestly, I actually really enjoy this. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe. Really like to take care, guys.